Within the last few years, there have been a number of extensions released for Visual Studio Code that promises to add AI or artificial intelligence into our development workflow. Now, the first question we should probably ask are, what are those robots playing about? Are they trying to pick their jobs? If not, the second question we should ask are, will these actually live up the marketing hype? And will they make us more productive when we're writing code? Or are we just gonna end up with a load of code rot? So what I'm gonna do in this video is review the four most popular AI-based extensions for Visual Studio Code, which are Copilot, Tab9, Kite, and Telecode. So what I'm gonna do is install each of them in Visual Studio Code, walk through the suggestions so you can have a look yourself, and then you can make your own mind up. Now, the great thing about all of these extensions is there's a free tier for all of them. So if one of these floats your boats, you can get going with it today at zero cost. If this is the first time that you have stumbled across this channel, then you are in for an absolute treat. So my name is John and I do weekly YouTube videos on web development and productivity. So if this type of stuff floats your boat, I suggest you do two things. First, you should smash on the subscribe button. And second, you should help me out and click on that like button. And as a little reward for that, I'm gonna show you a picture of a funky robot. Oh. Now, enough of this twaddle. Let's have a look at one of these extensions in action. We are going to start our AI journey looking at GitHub Copilot. So Copilot is still in beta. However, you can request access. It's also gonna get launched very quickly and there will be a free version on launch. Now, I think out of all these extensions, Copilot definitely has the wow factor. What it can do is while you're writing code, it will start suggesting lines, functions, and classes merely based on what you're writing. So as you do your function declarations, or even if you write comments, it will understand what you're writing and give you suggestions. So let's have a look at some of these features in action. So are you prepared to be razzle dazzled? Because I'd say Copilot definitely has that je ne sais quoi when it comes to demoing. It looks fantastic and really impressive. However, go past the gloss. Is it actually really useful for day to day development? Let's find out. So the nice thing about Copilot is instead of like just giving you IntelliSense, it's going to put the suggestions in your code file. So let's have a look at this in action function. Let's do get middle item in array. And then R. Oh, ooh, boom. As you can see, suggestion, it's done all the logic for me. I don't need to worry about math.floor, which I always forget about. I haven't had to go to Stack Overflow. That has definitely saved me some time. Now, just because it's given me some code, I don't trust it. So another nice thing we can do is do great units test for get middle. And as you can see, within seconds, I've got the logic, got a unit test. This demo is going well, right? Now, here's the thing. When you start doing this generate unit test, it looks really cool. But in an actual application, you want to have consistent code. And what will happen is if you use this unit test stuff, uh, maybe if I delete this, maybe if I go unit test for this function, go to the next line, um, as you can see straight away, I've got completely different suggestions now. So this is using vanilla JavaScript. And this is kind of the issue with the unit test generation is that sometimes it'll be description, sometimes it'll be assert, sometimes it might just be the data to run the unit test. So you get no consistency. So yeah, demo looks amazing. Impracticality, yeah. Mm. Now, obviously it is definitely possible to try and influence the suggestions. So maybe I want to say, get unit test um, with Mocha. Let's try and like actually get it a bit more in line with what I want to do. However, the problem I found is that you start writing your functions and your comments to try and trigger a suggestion. So it means that instead of actually thinking about the best naming convention for your application, you're writing your naming conventions to get the best suggestions. So again, it just means that you're not writing your application as optimally as you could be. Now, another one is it can also make you look like a chump. Now, we all know the benefits of being in a flow state, tippy tapping away, and that's how we can get the most amount done. That's how everyone is really productive. Now, one of the issues with Copilot, and I find myself doing this, is let's say we want to do validate email address. 
And we're going to have email in here. Now, this, simple, right? Now, often I find that Copilot might take a few seconds to load because obviously it needs to scan all those repositories. So I'll just sit and wait here for the suggestion. I can do an alt on backspace to try and force suggestion. But as you can see, I'm not getting anything. And when you use this day for day, what I typically find is when I start creating functions, stuff like this, I ended up starting, instead of writing code, I ended up waiting. Sometimes you just wait for like five, 10 seconds. And then you're like, that pesky eye, it's got me this time. It's probably down the pub having a drink. So now I'm looking at my method and going, hmm, what have I done wrong here? So maybe I need to do um, validate string is email regex. And if I go here, is this going to generate something for me? Oh, look, there we go. And this is kind of completely changing how I do development. Instead of me focusing on the code, I'm now trying to write code to get suggestions. So it's something to definitely um, keep in consideration. It all gets a bit metaphysical, isn't it? Is this actually making me more productive or is it actually making me less productive because I'm writing code for suggestions? Ooh. Now, I would say um, Copilot is definitely worth installing. It does give you good, some, some good suggestions. One thing that it does really well is it can give you boilerplate code. So let's say I'm going to write this bit of code. Pretty useless. However, it's going to figure out the pattern and then carry on doing it for me. So if you're doing like LIs and HTML, that kind of stuff, this can be really handy because it's just going to save you a bunch of time. So as you can see, for initial demo, Copilot looks really good. In terms of actually writing the best code for your application, which is formatted to your coding standards, that's going to pass your code reviews, mm, not so much. So there's no replacing you because you, my friend, are epic. However, yeah, that's one of the trade-offs you've got to think with Copilot. The next extension that we're going to explore is called Tab9. And Tab9 promises to give AI to your IntelliSense. Sounds magical. Now, because I'm an absolute cheapskate, I'm only using the free version. However, there is a paid version, which is 12 bucks. So in the free version, you get short code suggestions. In the paid for version, you get complete method suggestions, apparently, and longer code suggestions, as well as more craftier AI. So let's have a look at tab nine in action by copying the code that we started in the last example. Now, as you can see, as I'm typing, I'm getting a load of suggestions pop up automatically in my IntelliSense. And you can tell the ones by tab nine because they've got the word tab nine next to it. Now, as you can see, I don't think, I think this is less intrusive in my development workflow. Like I can look at them, but I don't have to use them. I don't need to wait because the suggestions, they're instant. Now, obviously, when I'm going in my function, I'm not getting that impressive or my logic's being figured out for me. I'm going to have to do the work myself. So let's say I now want to do, what was it? Return math. Straight away, I've got max.min. Let's do floor. Straight away, you can see that I've got some suggestions here. So we've got floor. We could do a floor.array length. Now maybe I can do divide by two plus one. So as you can see, tab nine is more of a complement to how you write where Copilot is more of a, I'm going to do everything for you. Now, one of the blets where I really thought tab nine shone was when I was writing. So recently I've created a book. Ah, uh, go and buy it. And writing a book using tab nine was a very nice experience because obviously when you're writing a book, you know kind of what you want to write. However, sometimes you can get um, writer's block in exactly how you want to structure a sentence or the exact words you want to use to make a point. So let's say I want to cross sentence which says, I want to impress you, you lovely little viewer. So I want, and then I can do to be able to make the viewer happy with watching there you go. But you can kind of get the gist is that you start typing, you know roughly what you want to say, and then actually having those suggestions can help you create better prose or craft your readmes nicer. 
So out of all the extensions that I'm going through in this video, I found that tab nine is the one that I used the most. It was the one which gave me the most useful suggestions. And it's also the one which worked well with my current development workflow. The next extension that we're going to look at is called Kite. Now, this started off as a Python AI tool. However, it's now been updated to use the mighty JavaScript. So Kite and tab nine are very similar. It's AI in your intelligence. So let's have a look at it by using our same function again. So this time, let's do it. Now, as you can see, I'm typing, but I'm not getting as many recommendations as I did before. Now I've eventually got a suggestion at the end, and you can see here it's got this kite with a bit of a weird font. So let's take kite suggestion. Thank you. Now, when we go to the next, let's do our return and then do our math. Now, as you can see, I've got math and math.floor. However, if you remember when we were using tab nine, we had loads of suggestions for the JavaScript. Hmm. So you definitely get less suggestions with kite. And the suggestions you get, they're not as in depth. So we have to think, I think, what was it last time? R dot length divided by two, I think. But as you can see right now, I'm not getting suggestions. After here, am I not, there we go. Maybe I can do a plus R. So Kite is good. I found it better than the out of the box Visual Studio stuff. However, compared to tab nine, you definitely don't get as many suggestions. Now, one area that I did find Kite very useful was it can give you like dummy data. So let's do first name. And then let's put our name in. Let's put var age. Let's see what it does. Zero. So I found Kite much better than tab nine when it comes to filling in like mock data for stuff. However, in terms of this general like day-to-day -day development for JavaScript at least, I found that tab nine was the winner. The final extension is the most downloaded one. This is called IntelliCode. So IntelliCode has been released by Microsoft. And again, it aims to add more AI into your IntelliSense. Now, straight off the bat, I will say IntelliCode definitely has the dumbest amount of AI. It will also give you the least amount of recommendations compared to tab nine or kites. And the recommendations it does give you aren't very personalized. So using our classic method, let's do another compare and contrast. So as you can see, we're at the end, no suggestions. Not getting a suggestion to put a variable in there. So it's not really using AI at all. Now what I can do next, no suggestions. But if I use my math, you can see straight away, I'm starting to get some IntelliCode suggestions. So you can tell the IntelliCode suggestions because they have star from it. Now I use Visual Studio all the time and IntelliCode is part of Visual Studio. So this is a very handy tool. However, you can see it's not the same level anymore compared to the newer, cleverer AI extensions. So if I'm trying to do something like JSON dot, because this is a first party method, you can see that it's recommending Stringify as it's the most popular, which is great. However, if I'm doing something like our classic first name example, yeah, within Kite, I was actually getting the suggestions. Tab nine was giving me code I want to read. So IntelliCode is going to make your life a little bit easier. However, it's just not got the same level of capability and customization to any other extension. That concludes my quick compare and contrast against the four most popular extensions within Visual Studio Code for artificial intelligence. So what do you think? Do you have a favorite? Is there one on the list you think I've missed out? Please leave comments below because I'm always interested. Now, in terms of which ones do I personally use, it's possible to have Copilot, Tab9, and Kite running all at the same time, and that's currently my setup. I don't worry about IntelliCode because I didn't find it that useful. Now, out of the suggestions, I found that Tab9 definitely helps increase my productivity. I found that Copilot can be useful once in a while. However, if you try to use it too much, it's not going to make you as productive as you think it might. And then Kite, it is really good. It's just not going to give you the same amount of recommendations as tab nine. So if I had to go tab nine or kite, 
I'm going to have nine. If you have found value from this video and you want to show some appreciation, there are two things you can do. The same two I said at the beginning of the video. First, just to make sure you don't lose my content, smash on the subscribe button and then click on like. Clicking on like basically helps this channel to grow. So I'd be immensely grateful if you did it because it takes me lots of time and effort to do these videos. I also do a weekly Sunday newsletter called the Sunday Sessions. In it, I just give you updates about my content, some programming humor, and some links about interesting things I found on the web this week. So if that sounds good to you, links below, subscribe to it, cost nothing. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great day in this world. I hope a robot hasn't taken over your job. Until next time, happy coding.